All right, so I'm leading because I have less context here. Um, so we were initially, I think, just trying to figure out what context we shared on what we meant when we were talking about boundaries for uh, individual sovereignty, rights, et cetera, when any two entities interact. So obvious example would be two people interacting and there are physical boundaries that you kind of have and could be clearly violatable, um, but you could also have boundaries in other senses as well, um, potentially intellectual ones, potentially um, like psychological or emotional or like things that are cellular at a like lower resolution or societal, cultural at a higher resolution. And so this is uh, like multiple ways you could define boundary at one level, multiple levels on which you could define boundaries. And the question that we were exploring was, is there a way to go about uh, practically identifying what a boundary is in a way that humans can understand it and use it well, and also we can hand this to machines and they can operate based on those understandable uh, definitions. What would you add to that so far? Yeah, that, that seems right. Uh, locating the boundaries and then like figuring out what actions would betray them in advance. Yeah. And so uh, we specifically wanted uh, concrete approaches that could be made or they, they could be pursued where you could make progress and uh, try to show that like at least in these subset of use cases, because obviously uh, boundaries in the general sense is quite challenging. Maybe you could show in particular cases that you could uh, identify, you could define and implement boundaries usefully in some areas. Uh, the first one was kind of the most theoretical, most general, and additionally, unsurprisingly, most challenging, where a Markov blanket is basically a connection of correlations between uh, things that you would measure um, or might be interested in measuring, and the idea would be that you could define what a boundary is by identifying, well, these things seem very correlated, and these things are less correlated with that, so maybe this is the boundary. Uh, please elaborate. Yeah, um, but it's it's not clear that it's not clear that all Markov blankets are the result of like an actual agent there trying to sustain something. Um, and overall, this just seems like a very computationally hard approach. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed highlighting that uh, if you scope this down solely to environmental and genetic. Uh, inputs and health outcomes that you've managed to narrow this down just to the entire field of epidemiology. <laughs> uh, so this seems very challenging, but it gives you a nice way to think about how you might want to do this in the most abstract theoretical sense. Um, you can start applying <laughs> definitions like this to what sovereignty of a software system could look like. And it starts making sense to say like, okay, well like these systems are violating each other, like these programs are violating each other's boundaries. Um, I think I'm going to hand it to you to describe the enculturing agents to respect human boundaries. Yes, uh, so another approach that we've been thinking about is uh, describing boundaries in a way that can uh, allow humans to formally understand like where human boundaries are and where they can be respected and the things that like, for example, an individual can and can't do and can and can't inspect um, other individuals to do. Uh, but when this comes to AI, the interfaces aren't the same, and maybe there's ways in which humans and AIs can interact which aren't describable by like a social theory of boundaries. Um, or maybe there are ways in which AIs can interact with each other that aren't uh, formalizable in this way. Um, some ideas about this are maybe like, um, Encultured AI is doing something where they're trying to make a video game um, and maybe see if, uh, boundaries emerge from the organisms there, and maybe um, AIs could be fostered in this kind of simulated environment uh, to respect boundaries. Uh, another one of these possible directions was uh, the pursuing the specific example of computer security. What would it look like to formalize uh, the principles of least authority and related ideas into uh, a framework that uses kind of the language of boundaries to be able to extrapolate this or generalize it from just saying how 
programs should work to this is how people and like the information they create in these uh, in these environments and in these digital ecosystems should behave. Uh, there was also a like if you were to look at um, rather than the like very macroscopic physical boundaries, um, try to specify what boundaries could look like for um, like micro scale or like mole molecular scale biological contexts. Obviously, if you're poisoning someone, that is violating their boundaries. But at some point, like serving them a drink might not. And so, uh, like even though different people will vary on whether or not alcohol is in fact a poison. So uh, there are interesting questions that kind of span from the wholly digital, very precise system to something that starts to include more variables of the real world philosophy, how you would uh, encode things like people's desires and wills into this sort of a thing and see how uh, boundaries emerge not just at the individual level, where like it's very clear that a program is a program, but also in some like hierarchical level where individuals are made up of cell, like organs made up of cells, et cetera. Uh, anything to add on? Oh. Good thing we didn't finish answering the other questions. Uh, would you like to cover some of the, our, our last? Okay, I'll, I'll bring it home. Um, so in terms of how this is done, this is like, I would say the fundamental, or at least one of the fundamental problems of like government and law and social choice theory. And like the, the, we, we don't want to uh, make it sound like this is, like we're trivial, trivializing this. We're merely identifying approach that we think might be powerful enough to be spread across these very general domains. And uh, like we, we tend to think that uh, reinforcement learning from human feedback or like human discipline are like really the closest we've come to trying to solve these problems so far. And it could benefit from having something that was a little bit more formal and rigorous in the way that like the scientific method was really a shift from like being appeal, uh, from appealing to authority towards uh, being more evidence-based and like that has apparently worked out pretty well for the most part. Um, we have a few other comments in here, but in the last bit, I think the question would be, uh, what would useful next steps be? What would funding look like? Um, I think that if we, or, and, and or what would, uh, what would we ask for? I think that if someone said, I want to work on one of these, or I know someone who should work on one of these, or I really think that this is a good direction and I would like to fund this, that this starts becoming more of a two-sided marketplace matchmaking rather than a like, we have one direction, let's pursue it. So uh, if any of these sound interesting, uh, go for like, let us know. And uh, Chris, I think you are also interested in pursuing yes. one of these. I don't know if there was one in particular or like. Well, currently just... I'm trying to figure out the social thing and the philosophy for the AI and human interactions. All right, so there is a, there is a particular direction if there is funding for that. computing and Mark Meller's work and how we can uh, make it kind of more human in its UX. So I really appreciate that you guys talked about that. You're very welcome. <coughs> what would you do in a boundaries focused workshop? Like which kind of people would you even need there? Like some biologists? <laughs> like... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's there's other uh, people who are interested, like Andrew Critch is interested in this, and Davidad, and uh, it's part of the OAA, and maybe like like Michael Levin's kind of work. Yeah. I think that there are probably two two formats that workshop could take. The first one would be trying to create materials, uh, like create enough consensus, rough consensus amongst people who are high context, so that you could. Uh, create like onboarding, these are what we mean when we talk about boundaries, this is how you should think about it um, in your own particular domain. And then the other format of workshop would be to get a group of people to specify boundaries for that, that particular domain. And so ideally I would do, I don't schedule one of each, 
uh, like the first one and then one of the second type as like a trial and then if that goes well, extract, expand that second set to cover as many domains as possible. But I would not expect there to be like high collaboration. There could be some, some shared learnings between domains, but I think that like each of those approaches could be done very independently. Cool. And I would be very interested in actually organizing. Them. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> um, any other comments, questions? Yes, Shadi. Yeah, just one comment. Uh, uh, Markov blankets are, I think, a fundamental part of uh, active inference, which is, yeah, I think you guys are aware of that. Uh, and yeah, there's a bunch of researchers that are looking at how cognition, um, how action selection in uh, multi-agent environments is very much delineated, is very much related to how do you define the boundaries between the agents and what they represent. So uh, there's tons of folks I think we could talk about that you should invite as well to the workshop. Appreciate it, thank you. Okay, thanks guys.